Uh, my name is Thiago Loureiro. I'm trying to get this bigger. Yeah, there it is. Um, and I'll try to present very quickly um, this about uh, our beloved plugins in Gutenberg. Uh, so first of all, thanks for all the organizers and all the people that helped uh, building this data center you have here now. Uh, and to the sponsors as well. So a disclaimer before, uh, is that I'm not associated with these plugins I'm going to talk about. Um, all the opinions uh, are my opinions here. And uh, the criteria for selecting them was from just how popular I feel they are and um, how close to the Gutenberg world uh, these plugins are. Um, so these are the plugins I'm going to talk about. Uh, Yoast, an SEO plugin, advanced custom fields, which is a plugin that facilitates inputting content uh, inside uh, a post. WooCommerce, uh, e-commerce plugin. TineMC Advance, which is, uh, if you guys don't know it, uh, TineMC is the rich tax editor that has been with uh, WordPress for a long time. And it's just uh, an extension of that. Ninja Forms, uh, a form plugin. Next Gen Gallery, and then the three uh, page builders to the end and how, how they're interacting with, uh, with the change that is coming to, uh, to WordPress. So first of all, uh, Yoast uh, is probably one of the, the companies slash developers that contributed the most to Gutenberg um, by either investing in the project or giving time and resources and educating people on how uh, WordPress uh, Gutenberg is going to be. Um, one of the earlier, earlier uh, adopters. Um, and they have this series on YouTube uh, called The Gut Guys. And these are two of their uh, employees from, from uh, Yoast. And it's a, very, it's a very cool series of videos, very short, very informative, uh, giving tips on how to use Gutenberg and how uh, it can interact with Yoast. Uh, so that's the old look of uh, Yoast in the page level, in a, in a post level, sorry. You have that box here. Where is my arrow? Mm -hmm. You have this box here, uh, which you can, in, inside that box, you can um, change SEO uh, information of the post you're writing, the page. Uh, you're about to publish. Um, that's the old look. In Gutenberg, that's how it looks. It's all the functionality is here. The same for no, no, nothing new. It's just uh, the same old functionality, but presented in a different way. So from this part, there's nothing. They, they had to do an effort, of course, to port this to Gutenberg. Uh, but it doesn't add new features uh, to the plugin, at least not in this part. Another thing is that, remember, there was this box here where you could see search snippets. Now it's an overlay on top of uh, Gutenberg. Same, again, same thing, no new functionality. And, but there's, there are two, uh, one nice feature uh, of Yoast. Very close to content, FAQ block. Uh, and um, is a way, so it's just like a template, it's a block that uh, is very easy for you to add uh, questions and answers. And um, the advantage of doing this instead of just going the classic way and writing it in plain text is that it's going to give you a schema out of the box. Uh, you don't need to write it. And that's schema, for, for you guys who know, uh, visit schema.org. Uh, adding schema to certain bits of your uh, of your code kind of helps uh, the search engines to understand your content better and present it in a nicer way. Um, so that's what that block that I was writing here. It becomes this once it's uh, it's published, and you don't have to be aware of this part. It, Yoast will do it for you. And it's very, uh, it's nicely presented. So right now, in the, in the newest version of Yoast, this, by the way, it's, it's very recent. Um, th they add the FAQ block and the how-to block, which is kind of similar, similar concept. You're just, uh, 
it's a structured text that is very easy to edit and, uh, and input text or just click add a question on this how to you add a, a time that uh, it takes for you to complete a certain task and the steps you can add images to it very simple and uh, cool it, it, the, what you see there is what you're going to see it's very close to what you're going to see once you publish uh, same thing again Like here? No, if you keep your face facing sure. the screen, okay. the mic is behind you, we won't pick it up. So good here? Oh, here. Oh, okay. Sorry. And then turn it to where? And then it starts flickering again. Here? All right. Is it better now? Is it better now? Cool. Awesome. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'll stay right here and not go anywhere. Um, so that's how it looks, by the way. Once uh, you have this schema, Google, for example, we will show your, your how-to in this nicer way. This is out of the box. This comes, uh, you don't have to do anything special. If you add that uh, how-to block, there's a good chance that your, uh, your result, if it's higher ranked, is going to show uh, this way on, on search engines. Uh, so that was a search I did, by the way, when I was searching about uh, this block. I, I, I searched for Yoast how to block, and uh, it gave me that search snippet about how to implement uh, a how to block. And I think that's one of the coolest uh, examples of uh, Gutenberg usage is uh, the annotations API. Um, it's very new, and it was developed um, by um, a guy, uh, engineer at uh, Yoast. One of the good guys, he, he was uh, the guy that developed this API, which is as you type, as you input content, uh, good, you, there is a way for Gutenberg to analyze your content on the fly. So this is very important for SEO stuff, like when you're writing a text and you want to know if that text uh, is good for SEO, you want to have this feedback on the fly. Not after you publish, you want to have it uh, as you type. So I just pasted this, this content inside Gutenberg. And the results on the right, uh, on the right uh, bar there, they are just on the flight, and it shows what what text can be uh, can be done different. And this is very powerful. Like you can have plugins analyzing your content as an input. And Yoast is probably the first one that I saw using this this cool feature called uh, annotations API inside Gutenberg. Uh, the roadmap for uh, Yoast. Uh, they want to align the classic one. They're still going to support. Um, they're still going to support the old editor. Uh, they're not uh, dropping it, so there's no risk of that. Um, and that's it. And they want to focus more in the annotations API, a way to analyze your content as you uh, input. The other one that I'm going to talk about is ACF. Um, version five of uh, ACF um, provides. Support for Gutenberg, and uh, version 5.8 uh, introduces ACF blocks. Uh, that's the classic. This here on the bottom is the classic. Uh, oops. Oh. This on the bottom here uh, is the classic uh, ACF uh, field group, like the the section there, right? And. Uh, it will work with Gutenberg. You can add new pieces of information that you can extract uh, inside your, your post. And that works the same way uh, as the old editor. So this, you're seeing on the bottom of the Gutenberg uh, editor, is the same as this. It's the very same as this uh, screen you can see in the classic editor. The new thing is that now you can have uh, uh, ACF blocks. And the only difference is that when you're, when you're defining where your ACF is going to show up, you're, you can say now, 
I want it to be a block. It will be a new option. This is, by the way, is beta. I, think, I don't think it's available uh, in, the, in the main version. It's uh, 5.8. It's very recent, like 10 days ago kind of thing. Um, and this is the code. It's not really uh, important now, but that's the code it takes for you to render uh, an ACF block uh, inside the Gutenberg editor. So let's see if we can see uh, want to play the video. That would be hard, just a second. So uh, the same block I had before, I just, that it was not a block, sorry, the same ACF group I had before. Sorry. The same at, is that, yes. So the same uh, ACF group I had before, I transform it into a block. So as I type, you can see that the content is being displayed there. I'm not, I'm not publishing it. It's just, uh, it's, it's very dynamic. And that's all with ACF. The advantage of that is that you don't need to do uh, any React, any JavaScript code uh, to display that and to, uh, and to, to make your blocks. So it's, it's very useful if you don't want to go into the JavaScript realm. You can just uh, use ACF to that. Um, WooCommerce is the next one. Um, the WooCommerce is not changing, and I couldn't see any um, plans that they have to move the product editor to Gutenberg. Um, so th what, I, what I've heard for, from uh, WooCommerce is that they want to make the experience inside WooCommerce to get as close as to, 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 to Gutenberg as possible. I might be wrong on that, uh, but that, that's the notion I'm getting, is that uh, they're not moving initially to Gutenberg, the product editor, I mean. But there are plugins on top of WooCommerce that uh, provides this functionality of, uh, of transforming WooCommerce pieces into Gutenberg blocks. One of them is also, it's made by the team, by the by Automatic. It's called uh, Gutenberg Products Block, which is just uh, a way that people can add, showcase their products uh, inside Gutenberg. So I added the, like the, the, this block there, and you can choose what kind of uh, products you're going to pick. It displays right away uh, and screen how it's going to look like. And you can change, for example, the number of columns uh, and the number of products you want uh, on the screen. Um, Yeah, and once you publish, what you're going to see is pretty much what you have in the editor. So there it is. There's another uh, plugin on top of WooCommerce that's kind of popular, which is uh, Advanced Gutenberg. Um, it provides other kinds of blocks, including WooCommerce blocks. Then there are a lot of plugins popping up like that now. They just provide various blocks for you to use. Um, there, it's a five stars plugin so far. Um, and it, it's pr the same idea of the plugin I showed before. It's just a way to display your products. This one has a little bit more options, including a slider. Uh, see, you can slide your products. Um, and it also adds all sorts of plugins. It's not, it's not a WooCommerce uh, specific plugin like the other one. Um, future of WooCommerce, uh, I couldn't see it, at least in the, in the WooCommerce, WooCommerce uh, project itself. You can follow this link to see what, what are their plans uh, for WooCommerce. Um, not a lot uh, related to Gutenberg so far, but I think in the plugins for WooCommerce, there's a lot of stuff going on, mostly to uh, display your products in a nice way. And if you want to search for um, new plugins uh, for WooCommerce or plugins that offer blocks for WooCommerce, there is this nice link here called Editors Blocks WP which is a kind of marketplace just for blocks. It's not, a, it's not a marketplace for plugins. It's just like you can find your block here and it's going to have a description, a description of the blocks you can find and the plugin that offers them. Um, Tiny MCE Advanced. So Tiny MCE is this uh, editor that has been with WordPress for a long time so far. It's a rich text editor um, made in JavaScript. And uh, there are some options uh, for, for formatting your text, but it's kind of limited. Some people need a little more, 
need a little bit more uh, power to uh, to format their text. And uh, so there's what there's where uh, TinyMC Advance comes uh, because it adds the the option to create like tables and format your text like uh, apply. Uh, font family to it, apply color, and this you cannot do with the regular editor. And the way it, uh, and it, it works with Gutenberg, by the way. So that's the Gutenberg editor. And if you can see it here on the bottom, let's wait for this you thing. Make this full screen anyway, Sorry? You make it full screen? Let me try. Yeah. Okay, a little bit better, sorry. Um, that's this on the bottom here is the classic block. You're, you're going to have the classic block on Gutenberg, which is is the classic editor. Um, you're going to have the same capabilities you have in the class editors right now, but it's inside a block. Um, and TinyMC Advanced also works with this box. So the same the same capabilities I had before, I have here now. I can edit the color of the text and stuff like that. Next one, uh, Ninja Forms. Uh, it's I think from the popular form plugins is the one that offers um, a Gutenberg block. And, um, and it's still in beta. So I couldn't make it work with doing some tests here. I couldn't make it work. So this uh, GIF is coming from their page. Um, so very soon, they will have a stable version. That will be just like this. You, you add a block, and you, then you can move your form as a block. That's how it works. Uh, you're, you're not going to add the block from this interface, you're just going to select the block that you already created in the other screen. And you can also do the short code way uh, because there is a short code block. Next one, next gen gallery, similar concept of uh, Ninja Forms. You can add a gallery elsewhere or add a gallery. So that's how it looks, sorry. Let's one, go, go one step back. Uh, you can, in the usual way, you can add a gallery. That's a classic editor. You can add a gallery by just uh, pressing this button, and uh, it will show this block here inside. Not a block, because that's a classic editor, sorry. It's going to show this inside a classic editor, and you know that uh, by clicking at it, you're going to have all the capabilities uh, for editing uh, your gallery there. With Gutenberg, it's similar. So you can press there. There will be a block for next gen. Once you add, you're going to have the very same overlay we ha you had in the classic editor. Same experience, no, no new feature. They're just transporting what they had before uh, to Gutenberg. Uh, and that's it, nothing really, uh, nothing new just for Gutenberg, They're just transporting stuff. But it takes time, this is not, plugin developers, they have to take the time to make it work with, uh, with Gutenberg. It's not a lot of work, I think. It depends on how complex your plugin is, but there is definitely work that has to be done from uh, plugin developers. Next one, now is the, I'm going to talk about the, the builders uh, and how they are reacting to, uh, to Gutenberg. First one, it's one of my favorite ones, uh, Beaver Builder. And um, what I feel is that most of these uh, builders, they're, focus, they're focusing, they're playing nice with Gutenberg. Um, they want to be part of it, that's the sense I get. Um, and the initial effort is to be able to translate from one experience to the other one. For example, going from Beaver Builder to Gutenberg and vice versa. So they wanted to make it nice so people don't lose whatever work they, they've done once they, they, if they want to transition between the two. So all of them will have some sort of capability to, the ones that I'm analyzing are, by the way, Beaver Builder, uh, Elementor, and DV. And all of them have this uh, capability of like you're writing a, a post and you want to now switch to, to be rebuilder. It's, it's possible. It's, uh, the translation process itself, it's, uh, it's, it's what varies between them, how well they do this translation. Um, and they're, they're not afraid of Gutenberg. I think this, this idea that some people have that uh, the builders are afraid of uh, see Gutenberg as a, as a competitor that might crush them. I think in, in real life, they're not. They, they know the market that they're in, um, and, and they know that there'll be space for them. Um, th that's my opinion. That I know that uh, there's a lot of debate on that. Um, and by the way, 
uh, and they know they 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 are they were these, these people that uh, are developing these plugins. They were like the first ones to um, to initiate this uh, kind of revolution that Gutenberg is part of. Um, by by and they they behave the same way. It's like you have blocks, you have uh, controls, specific controls for each block. They've been doing this before Gutenberg. Um, the problem with build, uh, Beaver Builder is that they don't have a, a Gutenberg block itself. And you're going to see uh, soon what I'm talking about. That's the translation uh, process, by the way. Uh, it's hard for you guys to see that. Um, but what I have here on the left, supposing I have these three blocks here, once I move this post to Beaver Builder, Beaver, Beaver Builder is going to understand it as a full classic uh, Beaver Builder block. It's not going to translate one to one. One Gutenberg block is, doesn't become one Beaver Builder block. So that's the state Beaver, Beaver Builder is. Um, when, you go back to, from, when you go from Beaver Builder to Gutenberg, it does some translation. It, your, your Beaver Builder content becomes uh, some of your blocks there inside Beaver Builder will become uh, Gutenberg blocks. But, as you can see here, the translation is not the same. So what you see is here as circles, here will become the word circle. It's not, it's not the same thing. Next one is uh, Elementor. Uh, if you can see how it works, it's, it's very similar to the way, to a lot of things that you're seeing good Merkel, right? You're choosing blocks. You're, uh, in, the, in this case, you're dragging to where you want to place them on the screen. Um, and you can have, once you click on, the, on these blocks, you, you're going to have more control uh, for editing these blocks. Same thing for the translation thing that I'm talking about. Uh, once you go from Gutenberg to Elementor, what, all you have is going to be a big Elementor block. When you go to, from Elementor to Gutenberg, what I got was also a big Gutenberg classic block. Um, there, is a, there is a very nice plugin. That's, what I think, what uh, differentiates uh, Elementor from all, from all the other plugins is that they offer Gutenberg block, and it's very powerful. It's, it's a middle way between the two approaches, um, and it's a plugin on top of Elementor uh, created by the Elementor team, um, which is on, here on the left, I created a section or a page template, and I'm going to use this page template inside Gutenberg. You see, that's exactly the, the section that I created here. And now it's inside Gutenberg. If you see it again, I'm going to add an Elementor block. And then I choose from the list of my previously created Elementor blocks. And then it displays there nicely. And it's, it's a nice transition. And it's very interesting they are working on that too so early. Uh, and it kind of, yeah. Just, I just saw this in Elementor. I don't know if there, and there are any other build, uh, page builders offering this kind of uh, transition, but they are, and it works nice. Last one is uh, Divi, um, a page builder like all the other ones. Uh, so here is an example of how they're transitioning from uh, Gutenberg. So here they are in Gutenberg, and they offer a nice button there to move this content to, to Gutenberg, to, sorry, to DV. And one, once you're inside the DV screen, it, it offers the, the, the option to use the existing content or, or start from scratch. You're going to have both options. In this case, that I already had text here, they're just using the existing content there. And uh, from there, you can have all the DV capabilities again, and you can improve whatever you wrote on Gutenberg. The ideas that a lot of these page builders are, are having is that use Gutenberg to write your content, not to style it. And once you have your content, bring, bring it to, to the page builder. Uh, and then you can style it uh, to your taste. And that's it. Sorry I was very fast because of the time. And if you guys have questions, uh, let me know. Oh, question there, sorry. Um, I guess the only difference between Gutenberg and the Elementor is the fact that you can't do columns. There are a lot more differences. So the, the question is if the only um, difference between uh, Gutenberg and some page builders 
is the fact that they have columns. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's more than that. Page builders will do the column bit better, far better than Gutenberg at this point. Uh, there are more differences. They've been around for more time, so they have blocks that, are, that have better controls and have more controls and stuff. Um, and the way they save information is also different. So uh, I'm not sure how this, this builders, how they, they store the information, if it's in form of pure HTML, but Gutenberg uh, has its own way. So that's, that's also different in the development side. It depends, yeah, I think for simple cases, Gutenberg will do it. And if you're, if you're starting on WordPress, what you're going to see now, it's Gutenberg, right? Yeah. Uh, if people are already in the, in the builder realm, they will have a lot of plugins. They will know how to play with it. And these this plugins have been around for some years now. Yeah. Uh, and, and they can continue with it. There's no, there's no damage. Uh, but they're, they are offering transition paths to both people, the ones that are in Gutenberg and want to transition to, to a builder and vice versa. Any other question? Cool. So which of these builders best integrates with Gutenberg? Uh, the question is which one of these builders integrate best with Gutenberg? Uh, the translation bit, I liked the way, they are pretty similar. They will, they will, they will have, uh, they will fail in some parts. So it will require, once you transition, once you translate, you require some fine tuning. I think there's no way to go around it right now. The one I liked the most was uh, Elementor, even though I'm a big Beaver uh, Builder uh, fan, because of the block. Because it, it has a nice way of you creating your blocks in Elementor. If there's something you can only do in Elementor kind of scenario. I, can, I know how to do it in Elementor, but I don't know how to do it in Gutenberg, but I want to use Gutenberg. In this scenario specific, it's, 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 cra it's great, it's great. Because you can just pick your block, you can create your block separately in, inside Elementor, which right now will have better styling capacities out of the box. Gutenberg, not so much. If you, if you just use vanilla Gutenberg right now. They, ha they had a head start on Gutenberg, right? They have like two, three years ahead of Gutenberg. Uh, so now, if you want to do very fancy graphics using a page builder, using uh, WordPress, using a page builder, sorry. Uh, go for a page builder. Gutenberg, uh, I feel that Gutenberg it would need some way to go or some plugins to add on top of it to, to reach the kind of same level of uh, designing uh, visual uh, stuff. Any other question? Uh, one question there. Go. Uh, the question is, uh, if using uh, a page builder, if Yoast is going to play nice with, with this page builder, is that? I'm not sure. I don't think so. So, for some, because Yoast won't understand some, uh, some of these blocks, I feel. I, I, I never heard of any integration of, with Yoast and these blocks. I might be wrong. Uh, but it, for example, if you use the FAQ block from Yoast, uh, I don't know if this page builders will have FAQ blocks too. They probably will. Uh, and if they add any SEO um, goods in it, it's, it's probably going to be from the own plugin, from the own page builder. And I, that's not their business, right? Like it's, it's their, their business is to create a page builder. It's not their focus. They can, but it's not their focus. So I, I would say no. Uh, they, don't, they don't offer it, but I'm, I'm just guessing. Uh, WP glue? Okay, he, does, he does different integrations for Yoast with different type of content, like for ACF. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. That's, that's amazing. He's yeah. probably, probably going to build. That's his business model. So he'll probably build. It won't be out of the box. I, I'm pretty sure it won't be out of the box because it's, if you're a page builder, you don't want to go too deep into SEO. You know. Any other question? One question there? Yeah. The, uh, the, the FAQ 
picture on, on, uh, on Yoast, is that intended to be part of the visual page, or is something that when Google scans the page, it just sort of fires back out to Google with the structured information? So the question is if uh, the FAQ block is intended to be part of the visual page yeah, yeah, of, of how it's what's published. And they're at that site. Yes, yes. I can show I can show again. I no, I, 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 well, so what what you're going to see there what you're going to see there in the in the editor Ah it's gone. Uh, okay. What you're going to see in the editor as you're adding the your FAQ block is it's what you see in the end. Let's see. I, I, I ah. Obviously, having, uh, giving a helping hand to Google to be able yes. to make sense of it That's before you even have a page, there's obvious marketing advantage there. Yes. Uh, copy, uh, what I'm just trying to figure out is, uh, do they have an intention of creating a whole series of blocks? I think so. I, I, I think so, because it doesn't really make sense to create just this two. I think it's just a starting point. Because there are other entities, uh, other, other schema entities, mm -hmm. that a lot of people use, and they're not there yet. So I think Yoast is kind of moving in this direction of offering this templates for for information input, kind of, uh, and this is a starting point for them. And they started with probably the popular ones, which is like FAQ uh, and uh, how to. Uh, but I didn't see anything official about it, about direction and stuff, yeah. even on interviews of Yoast. Yeah. They're working on lots of places, on, lot, on different fronts on Gutenberg. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, they are there. They're there, and they probably want to provide more support, more features. Probably the, the new features of Gutenberg will come from Yoast, I feel. Uh, they will be always pushing it, it further. Yeah. They, have, they have resources in the company directly working for Gutenberg. Mm -hmm. So that's how uh, inside of it they are. So the FAO block is only available once you load the SEO, uh, the Yoast uh, uh, plugin. So the question so is... There's no block in Gutenberg that says that. The question is if the FAQ block is inside uh, Yoast, there's no, and there's no, yes, that's, that's it's part yes. Of it's part of Yoast, it's part of Yoast. It's Yoast providing blocks that are for content. Okay. That's, and that's but, new. But it becomes a Gutenberg block. Yes, yes, it's part of... On, once you publish, it doesn't matter where, where it's coming from. It's, it's going to display. Uh, it's a plugin that provides you a new block inside Gutenberg. Once you disable Yoast, for example, you're still going to have your posts there, uh, but you're not going to be able to input new ones. Any other question? One question there. Any sliders that integrate? The sliders? Um, I show, so one of the plugins that I show there, the, uh, the question is if there are any sliders integrated with Gutenberg. Uh, probably. I, I, I'm not sure. Short, sure, yeah. You can integrate them in Gutenberg. And I show one of the plugins that had a slider in it. So it's, it's probably not a, not a crazy challenge for people to add. There are a lot of plugins that will add a bunch of different blocks. Gallery, probably gallery, the gallery one, the next gen gallery, probably offers a slider of, a slider of images. Um, there, are, there, are, there are a lot of uh, plugins. There's like a pack of blocks, and, and I show one of them. Uh, the slides will be available, by the way. Uh, I cannot. Uh, okay, uh, it'll be on my uh, Twitter. Um, let's see if I can show it here. Yeah, it'll be on the screen soon. Uh, any other question? Nope. Cool. Thanks, guys.